Most residents of Chatham-Kent know Marjorie Crew as a local city councilor. But to residents of the East End, she's best known as the founder of East Side Pride, a community policing organization that's dramatically changed Chatham's East Side neighborhood over the past decade. Now, TV Kojiko spoke with Ms. Crew about the work that she's doing in our community when she's not busy at City Council. I, I'm the founder of Eastside Pride, and we began in uh, 1999. And uh, it was it's any time a community decides to become involved, usually there's something that is very, um, the word is, very disturbing to them, and it's the straw that breaks camel's back. Now, for East End residents, the straw that broke the camel's back was a murder that took place back in the 1990s behind the Royal Tavern. And that urged East End residents to do something about the deterioration they saw in their community. In our case, it was a murder that happened down at the Royal Tavern, uh, behind the Royal Tavern, in the, the local creek, McGregor's Creek behind the tavern. Um, that was the straw that broke the camel's back and got us talking about uh, the deterioration of the neighborhood, what was happening, and uh, got us started. That was the starting point. There's been many, many things that have evolved over the, the course of that time. The streets at that point were completely riddled with drugs and prostitution and John activity and uh, all the spin-offs from the drug culture. And uh, we're proud to say that in those 12 years, we have managed to work with partners, work with partners, work with the police, work with uh, the newspaper, the courts, all different partners to make some changes and change the level of the street level drug activity that we saw that was influencing our neighbors. It was pe keeping people held hostage by the code of silence because you didn't talk about it. You just. Uh, and now we tend to speak loudly about drugs in our neighborhood. Now, over the years, residents have seen steady improvements taking place in the east side as a result of East Side Pride's work, with a significant overall reduction in crime. So we've developed some strategies as a community in partnership with the police and, and the neighbors and uh, uh, the drug unit. Um, and what we've done is we have effectively shut down probably 70, 80 crack houses in this neighborhood. Drug houses, not just crack, but all types of drugs. And uh, through that process, we've learned about drugs and the impact that it has on people. And it's not just the drug addicts, it's their families, it's the community. And it doesn't just affect this neighborhood, it affects the community at large. Um, one of the things that we, when we began the community stroller program was to be visible and that's where the, uh, the, the, the fluorescent looking uh, logo came from and uh, one of those reasons was we want everybody good and bad to know who we are and we use the media to get our message out uh, and they were a really strong partner and they helped us a lot. Uh, if people don't know what you're doing it's kind of hard to uh, be effective. And, or as effective. So that was a really good tool for us. Um, as we, what we do when we are out doing these citizen patrols is we just document suspicious activity. And since we know all the characters or most of them around our neighborhood, we know the, the folks that are going here and there, frequent visits, and we document that and send it to the drug unit. And um, that's been very effective. It's helped uh, gather information for the police to use when they are, uh, execute warrants. So that's become very effective and that's one of the ways that we shut down a lot of drug houses. Uh, we've become recognized as uh, by all folks in the neighborhood and the other thing is we want the police to know us if we're in trouble and that's never happened and I think one of the keys to our success there um, is because we're respectful to everybody. We don't talk to anybody other than in a manner that we want to be talked to. So, you know, if, if they want to cuss and swear at us, we're not going to give it back to them. Uh, and uh, that's just the way it is. So I guess that's one of the keys to our success is just treating people the way we, we expect to be treated. Um, we have great backup. Yeah, we have uh, excellent backup with the Chatham-Kent Police Service. And we can't say enough about them because we've 
very rarely had to call 911 because of a situation, and that's been in the long past. But uh, they've responded quickly and swiftly and always had our back. But the group does more than just street patrols. Over the years, they've worked with community partners like the Chatham-Kent Police and local residents to help bring about improvements to properties all across the East End. This house in, in the background here is, um, it doesn't look like much right now, but I'll tell you, it's a huge improvement. There was a lot of um, activity there that uh, the landlord tried to curtail and uh, to no avail, and she ended up with squatters in there destroying her property and everything. And um, she got in touch with me and uh, we talked about options and she decided just to board it up and sell it. And I, I understand someone's bought it. They've cut the trees down, they're cleaning it up, they're putting new windows in it. Um, and like I say, it doesn't look like much now, but it is really a whole lot better than what it was. And it looks like they're really on the road to recovery with that house. And the group also is involved in helping to maintain an upgrade Taylor Park and Orville Wright Pool both of which were long overdue for repairs. This is our new basketball court that uh, was donated by a, a local prominent businessman in our community, called me one Christmas time and said, what do you need down there? And I said, well, geez, that basketball court's in rough shape. And I never heard back for a while. And next thing I know, someone from the municipality is calling me saying, do you know anything about the resurfacing of the basketball court? I said, well, I had heard about it a while ago and well it's being done right now so I came down here and he had all the partners in here and they redid the basketball court in an evening. Anyway this is part of the revitalization of our neighborhood as well, uh, getting a new pool and uh, I'm sure the kids are going to be extremely happy this summer. The municipality applied for the grant and got this or this pool would be done if we didn't get that life-saving uh, money from the government because we just can't afford to rebuild pools and, and that's the sad nature of not just our neighborhood the whole community and other communities as well there's a lot of young kids in this now the group was also responsible for the creation and preservation of the bme freedom park in conjunction with the black historical society of chatham kent this is the bme freedom park and this park is a partnership uh, between the chatham kent black historical society Eastside Pride and the municipality, municipality of Chatham-Kent. Um, this, there's a lot of symbolic things here in the park. And first of all, there used to be, this is a historic site. This was the BME church stood on this property. And it was here, it was torn down in 1986. That church had several meetings in it. Uh, re during the abolition of slavery in the states and a lot of uh, one of the abolitionists John Brown actually had a meeting here to collect a few good men from Chatham to go fight uh, against slavery in the United States so one of those key pieces took place right here on this property. Um, this, this, um, this lot was nothing but wild grass and uh, Gwen Robinson from the Black Historical Society had a dream that this would be a park that had meaning and uh, people could come here and reflect about the um, contributions of the black community to the east side of Chatham. So I'm just going to just talk about a little bit about the symbolic things that we're standing on. The wavy sidewalks are symbolic of the um, not so straight path to freedom that uh, slaves from the United States faced when they came here. Okay, you're standing on, these flagstones are reflective of uh, broken families and broken lives as, as they come to freedom. And this large flagstone is symbolic of the bridge to freedom and this circle is a circle of life. We have implemented as many green things. We have solar uh, energy that uh, lights up the um, bust of Marianne Shad Carey. Marianne was done by Artist Lane, who is a world-renowned artist who lived directly across the street in her younger years and went to CCI and lived in uh, North Buxton. And uh, we are extremely proud of this bust and uh, to have this piece of art in our neighborhood is just absolutely fantastic. 
we did crime prevention audit on this park. So what we did was design out crime uh, using SEPTED principles. So it, for instance, you'll see on the retaining wall, we have some clips that's to keep the skateboarders off. We were hoping we wouldn't have to do it, but it, they showed up. So we had to put some metal clips up there so they can't skateboard. We kept clean sight lines so everybody in the neighborhood can see this park. And one of the really cool things, this is, since 2009, this is truly a neighborhood project because people come and they plant flowers here and people come and uh, they, they call the police if they see anybody in here. Uh, so, you know, it's truly owned by this neighborhood and that's, that was our goal, it was to have something that the neighborhood could be proud of. Now, despite the support of Chatham Kent Police, Marjorie says the group still needs to do fundraising and has an annual budget need of about $10,000. We, are, we need a budget at this point of about $10,000 a year. We do a mentoring program with kids, uh, Cops Link with kids. We partner kids with uh, police, and we take them out on a golf course and let them get to know the police officers in a different setting, in a non-violent, non-judgmental, neutral setting. And it's really cool to watch the kids kind of warm up to the cops, and uh, the, ki the cops learn about the kids and what they're going through. We also, uh, our new project this year, we're supporting, we're adopting the AME Soup Kitchen. Um, we need to make sure that the people who need in our community are taken care of. We have uh, Lend a Hand projects, and that takes on many forms. We are a partner with the Chatham Kent Black Historical Society, and uh, we built the BME Freedom Park, and we maintain it with them. We have a Christmas event every year. We're going to do something new this year. We usually have our Christmas caroling hayride, but we're going to change that up. Many of these people have gotten involved over the years. Uh, I think Mona was probably here the longest, and then Heather came on, and then Bev. Uh, so I'm going to ask Mona why she got involved. <laughs> I got involved with my daughter. Um, she was having a little bit of trouble, so she, uh, she joined the group because to build her her self-confidence and whatnot and I got involved with her just to give her moral support. I got involved as a new resident to Chatham Kent. I was looking for some way to help my community to be a part of my community and it was suggested by my husband that this would be a gr good group to join that there was lots of fun and lots of work to be done and I've been here 10 years now. Three years ago we renovated a house and we had to keep it vacant while we were remodeling. We were living somewhere else, and that's when I noticed Eastside Pride in the neighborhood, and they were always walking by. They were keeping an eye on the house. They knew we weren't around. So we moved in two years ago, and from that point on, I joined because I knew what they had done to the neighborhood, how bad it was before. Um, and they, they essentially, their presence in the neighborhood has changed it. So I've become part of that, and I hear the horror stories how it used to be, and it is so not like that now. We do have a website, it's www.eastsidepride.ca, and it will be, the old one's still up, but we are revising that as we speak. Uh, a fellow named Adam Snow is providing that service for us, and that's, we're pretty excited about our new site. Now, if you're interested in being a volunteer or contributing to the work of Marjorie Crew and Eastside Pride, you can visit the group's website for more information on their walks, fundraising activities, and community outreach events. For TV Kojiko, I'm Dave Parkinson.